Well, good morning, good morning, and happy Friday to you. This is Stella, and today is Friday, our Better Life edition. We're excited to be here with you today. And I tell you what, you know, I I, I, I never, Facebook never ceases to amaze me. They keep changing stuff up, so you get used to stuff one way. And before you know it, they've switched it up, and so you got to learn stuff all over again. But you know what? That's all right. I'm smart. i got a good mind. i got a good life, and I'm just excited to be here. So today... Today we are talking about the joyful anticipation of good. You know, there is so much anxiety and so much stress in the atmosphere until I was uh, actually talk, had, a, had a conversation with a friend of mine the other day who was having difficulty sleeping and resting. And, you know, the devil is a lie. The enemy will come and rob you of your peace if you let him. You do not have to allow him. You don't, do not have to permit, allow, or in any way engage with any spirit that is designed to rob you of your peace. So today we're talking about what is uh, the joyful anticipation of good. You know, a lot of people have lost their hope and I'm here to tell you today that you need to go pick it up. Let's go find it because even in spite of everything that's going on and the era and the time that we are in, you have a hope a, and it's something to anticipate, something to look forward to. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the anticipation of the goodness of God. What are you looking for? So we're going to start out this morning with just asking you some questions, just some strategic questions. What are you looking for? When you get up in the morning, what's on your mind? When you wake up in the morning, what are the first thoughts that come into your head? You need to start paying attention. Good morning, Miss Beverly. Thank you so much for being on here with me. Today we're talking about the joyful anticipation of the goodness of God. Now, an anticipation has a nemesis, and the nemesis of anticipation is a spirit of anxiety. And so what the enemy is doing is he's trying to put people under uh, under heavy, uh, heavy weights of anxiety and worry and fear and discontent and disillusionment and doubt and unbelief. And all of these negatives are in the atmosphere. And so what we're doing today is we're talking about how do you counter that and how do you move from a place of anxiety and worry and fear, doubt, disillusionment to get over into the realm of anticipation, hope, encouragement, joy, and rest and peace. How do you do that? Okay. Well, that's what we're, that's our conversation for today. So let's start out. We're asking some questions. The first question is, what do you look for? I want to challenge you to stop and think for a moment about when you first wake up in the morning, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? What are the first thoughts that rise up? in your head? What are the first things that are in your imagination? Because those thoughts, those meditations that are in your sleep overnight actually are indicators as to what your day is going to look like. What's in your spirit when you awake is a clue to what you're going to anticipate, what you're going to, what you're going to be attracting to you all day long, because it's what has been stirring, brewing, and uh, uh, um, churning in your spirit overnight. Um, what are you focused on? So when you wake up in the morning, what's your focus of your mind? What are you, what are you meditating on? Are you considering the thing? Are, are you still thinking about the thing this morning that was on your mind last night that had you weighed down last night? And so you wake up with that same thing. And so let's talk about that for a second, because if you're still waking up with thoughts that were in your mind the night before that has not been put into place, a stopgap motion to interject something in there to change your energy of motion. The energy of motion or your emotional state is dependent upon what you focus on, what you meditate on. And so it's really important to, to get the answer to these questions because that's what's going to determine your level of anxiety about the future. Or it's also going to reflect on your level of anticipation of the goodness of God that he stored up for us. Now, God has made some significant promises to us. He has made some significant commitments and we have to turn our attention and our focus to those commitments because again those commitments that he has already made those promises he has already assured us of are going to be indicators of what we anticipate of what we look for and if you're looking for the wrong thing you're gonna find what you go looking for 
Now, several days ago, I was having prayer. I was praying for a friend of mine who was having some difficulty sleeping because of some anxiety. And you know what? That's what the enemy is doing right now. He wants to rob people of their peace. And if he can rob them of their peace, then he can stop them from having access to the promises. Again, the enemy wants to rob you of your peace so he can prevent you from having access to the promises. And so I, it reminds me of something that my mother said in a conversation I had with her years ago. You know, she, you know, I said, how do you stop from worrying about all of us? Something had transpired in our family. And, and, you know, I, I mean, I, I'd have been, I was concerned, but, but what my mother said really stuck with me. She said, I have too many children to worry. She said, I just focus on God. I focus on his promises and I trust that he will make up the difference. So whatever your worry, your anxiety is not going to add any, it's not going to add any link to your life. It's not going to add any solutions to your issue. It's not going to bring any resolution to it. So why are you going to worry about it? And one of my favorite passages, and this is a scripture that my mother stood on. So you can go ahead and put this one down, Beverly. This is Isaiah 49, 25. It's our first scripture of the day. So when it comes to things that you don't have control over, you can't control what happens to your kid over your kids 24 seven. You can't, you can't, you have no, once they, especially once, once they get up and they go and start going to school and they're out of your sight and they're out of your care and they're under the attention and the auspice of other people, there is nothing you can do about where they are all day long. You can worry, you can, but you're going to, Isaiah 49, 25 says, but thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. But I will contend with him that contends with you and I will save your children. God says that he will wrestle with those who wrestle with you. Now, just yesterday I was uh, listening to a report where they're saying that the department of justice is going to start investigating parents who are going to school board meetings to address the attacks that they're making on their children. And so last night I just began to pray. I said, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you release the angelic host of heaven into the department of justice. And before this demonic strategy even gets off the ground, we pray that you send the angels in there to cut, cut it off at the feet, cut it off at the head, cut it off, sever the ties of the demonic spirit that's trying to release that, cut off their communication with the mind of those who are in the department of justice. We send the cords with the angels. We equip those angels with the cords and the ties to bind the enemy and to take authority over that demonic strategy before it even gets implemented. We pray that the person who fostered that ideology, who purposed it and planned it in Jesus name, we release the host of heaven. Right now we call forth angels from the angelic realm where the king of kings and the lord of lord abides and we release those angels into the department of justice and we assign angelic prince uh, spirits from the king of kings and the lord of lords to every principality every power and every spirit of darkness in jesus name we release angelic hosts into that atmosphere to bring down the spirit that's setting a war on our children and we decree according to matthew 13 30 that Jesus said that he would send his angels into the earth to bind the tares. So we decree that the tares over the department of justice have been bound by the power of the blood of Jesus and the very words that Jesus himself spoke. And so father, we thank you right now that we will not worry. We're not going to get in fear. We bind a spirit of fear that the enemy would want to release from the Department of Justice. We bind the spirit of fear over being investigated by the Internal Revenue Service. We release angels, the host of heavens. We take our kingdom authority and we partner with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we said that let a what akura des imbiya santorika. We are to decree a thing and it would become established. And that where two or three are gathered together in our name, that in his name, when we agree, we're going to agree with the word of God and with what Jesus said, Beverly, you and I, it's just two of us. That's fine. The two of us is enough. Hallelujah. The two of us. So we agree and we declare in Jesus name that the principality and the power and the ruler of the darkness that's endeavoring to set up this strategy. We cut off your efforts and we release angels in to bring ambushments to you. And just like 185 Israelis who were coming against the children of Israel were coming against them. God sent an angel, one angel 
angel went in and took out 185 Israelis. We released the angels from the host of heaven. Lord, however many are, are needed, we call forth those angels. You said that the angels are sent to minister to the heirs of righteousness. And we praise you that you said that you will save our children. And so right now, we release angels into the Department of Justice. And we assign angels to every member of the organizational chart. And every position on the organizational chart. And we also release angels going into the upline. So wherever the order came from, we say go up the line to the one who released the order. And to cut off that principality at the head. Cut the head off and cut the tongue out of his mouth. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. So that that enemy will be removed. That spirit operating behind those individuals saying that parents cannot protest, that parents cannot, uh, cannot come to a school board meeting and address the issues that are happening with their own children. The devil is a lie. He's a lie. And so father, we praise you. And just like my mother lived with the conscious awareness of what God has said and what he was going to do, and she simply expected him to do it. God, we expect this. We expect the manifestation. We expect the newscasters to say that the person in the Department of Justice who, who perpetuated that lie, we expect the news to say that that individual has been removed or has changed their minds or has come into alignment with what God needs to happen in this hour. In Jesus' name. And so even as my mother uh, had taken that stance, trusting God to save her children, we get to do that. In fact, because we live in an environment that is charged with anxiety, what do we do? We do what I just did. What I just modeled, Nicolette, was an example of what you get to do because of the authority that you and I carry in the earth. Because of what God, we are the kingdom agents in the earth. We're not, we're not, we don't wrestle against, wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers and the demonic entities operating behind these individuals. These aren't people. The people aren't our enemy. It's the spirit operating behind them. And so we have the authority. God has said, you get to do that. And so what hap what has to happen if you allow, so what the enemy does as a strategy against us is he wants, he said, if I can get you worried and if I can get you into anxiety, then what I can do is I can stop you from stepping into your authority. I can stop you from accessing your power. I can stop you from moving forward and possessing the territory that God has given us. That territory that God has given us and he doesn't want and the enemy doesn't want you to take that territory and so what has to happen so when you have anxiety this is what takes place so first of all when anxiety comes, anxiety will attach itself to fear it is an extension of fear so when the anxiety comes, the fear comes and so that fear then will begin to mingle it looks for the five D's of the devil it looks for doubt it looks for disillusionment it looks for disappointment it looks for discouragement Encouragement. It looks for despair. It looks for depression. All of these D's of the devil, that's what anxiety looks for. Okay. And those thought systems will perpetuate anxiety. And before you know it, anxiety will have you focusing on the negative circumstances. It'll have you thinking, oh my God, I'm going to lose. They're going to lose the job. They're going to shut down the schools. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. They're going to do this. And all of those negatives will begin to bubble up. And as they surface and bubble up and people are meditating on them. And then what happens is then the enemy, the enemy will have you looking for signs of all of these impending manifestations. And he is a liar. And so that's an awful way to go through life. You don't go through life expecting the wrong things to happen. But instead of that, we get to look for the goodness of God. We get to anticipate his promises. And if he said in Isaiah 49, 29, 45, um, 49, 25, that he would contend with with those that contend with us. And so we release the angels of heaven to contend with those spirits operating in the department of justice who want to contend with our children, who want to destroy our children, who want to send our children into, mm, 
Uh, the devil is a lie. So we contend in the spirit. And so Nicolette and Amina and, and Beverly, the, just us, we set ourselves in agreement. We can come into agreement right now, just us. And the word of God says that one can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. So there are five of us of us on here right now. That's exponential authority. And if we just, if you say out of your mouth, Stella, I set myself into agreement with Isaiah 49, 25. Take that scripture out, Sherry, and put that scripture, get that scripture and put it on your, on your phone. And when you pick up your phone, every time you say, Lord, I remind you of this scripture, Isaiah 49, 20, 49, 25. And we release that scripture that you will contend with those who contend with us. And we're talking about the department of justice saying that they're going to investigate parents who are going to school board meetings to address the issues with their own children and the schools that their children go to. That is evil. That is demonic. That is a spirit. And in Jesus name, we don't fight against the people. We can, we come against the spirits and the principalities that are working behind them. How dare they say that your child has to be exposed to pedophilia in school? How dare they release curriculums that are designed to groom children for pedophilia? And then they say, we're going to release this curriculum into your schools. And then you can't come to the school board meeting and, and and fight against it? And then you're going to investigate those parents? No. We send the host of heaven into the Department of Justice. And we say, host of heaven, go investigate the Department of Justice. Go investigate them. Go up, go, go, and explore what's going on with them. Go and do work in the kingdom of God. Go and release the fire of the glory of God. Go and release the power of God. Go and release the warnings of God. Go and release. You go Contend with those who contend with the contend with us over our children. You angels go and fight for those. We decree love for our children. We declare for we, we speak life to those teachers and those educators who are releasing love and knowledge and wisdom and insight. We send angels right now to support those educators and those educational leaders who are bent on bringing the best for our children, who have our children's best interests in heart, their heavenly best interest based on the goodness of God and the love of God, not based on pedophilia and, and grooming them and pornography in our schools. That is ludicrous. And so we release the angels of the host of heaven. We come into agreement. You guys just say it out loud. I come into agreement with Isaiah 49, 25, but the Lord will contend with him that contends with thee. The Lord will contend with those individuals in the department of justice and in this administration. We, before they even get this ideology, before they even get this strategy off the ground, we send the host of heaven into that atmosphere and we decree angels bring those plans to nothing. Bring, the, bring those strategies to nothing. They don't ever even form. They're like a rainstorm, a rain cloud that never gets enough precipitation to form a storm. It's like a tornado that can never get enough whirlwind around it to extend a funnel. No, we cut it off. It never even touches the ground. It doesn't get off the ground in Jesus name. And we're not going to worry. We're not going to be anxious. We're not going to be fearful. We're going to walk in the peace and the love and the goodness of God. Now for those individuals, Lord, those individuals responsible, we release the presence of God into their lives. We pray, Father God, according to Job, uh, Job uh, 33, 16 through 21, I believe. We just release that word where God is releasing. He's sealing up instructions for them in the night season. He's revealing himself to them in their dreams. He's giving them. And Lord, we just thank you that they hear your voice and they hear you calling them, speaking in their ears, saying, this is the path walking in. And that any one of them who wants to, that's right, Father God, we thank you in Jesus name for canceling this assignment over our children. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for sending your
your warriors on our behalf. We stand in agreement with our kingdom of God family. Satan, you will not bring fear upon us for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, of a love, and of a sound mind. We praise you, God, for the power, which is the Holy Ghost, for the love, hallelujah, which is God himself, and for soundness of mind, which is the peace of God that passes all understanding that allows us to think, to, to focus, to create, and to establish options in the earth. Thank you, God, for that. Now, one of the things that I love about our country is in this nation, we get to choose the state that we live in. And just like we get to choose the state, hallelujah, we also get to choose our mental state because your mental state can be an, is an environment just like your spiritual state, your physical state. And so you, you can choose a state and your emotional state will determine what you get access to. So your emotional state can be impacted by fear. It can be impacted by anxiety, but since you have the opportunity to choose your mental state, you can determine that, Lord, I'm going to walk in a state of anticipation. I'm going to walk in a state of hope. I'm going to walk in a state of encouragement. I'm going to walk in a state of peace. In fact, you call those mental states, just like I say, I live in a state of Mississippi. I can say, I live in a state of anticipation. I live in a state of joy. I live in a state of peace. I live in a state of encouragement. I live in a state of hope. You call out the state that your mind is going to live in. It's going to abide be, abide in. Now, just like a spirit of anxiety, anxiety will attach itself to things. It'll attach itself to fear. It'll attach itself to doubt, disappointment, and the deeds of the devil. We also have the opportunity to attach anticipation to things. You can ant attach anticipation to faith like anxiety attaches itself to fear. You attach and you attach anticipation to faith and then you determine you're going to mix faith with joy. Now, why is joy so critical? Because the word of God says that the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. Now, in order for you to activate the kingdom in the earth, you need to know what the kingdom of God is made of. The kingdom of God is righteousness, it is peace, and it is joy in the Holy Ghost four elements. You've got righteousness, peace, and joy, and then they are packaged in the Holy Ghost. So now you're going to attach yourself. You're going to take your anticipation and you're going to attach it to joy. Why? Because joy is the joyful anticipation of good. It is expecting the goodness of God. It is the goodness of God that leads people to change the way they, they think. It is the goodness of God that changes them to alter their mindsets. Okay. And so we can take that favor. Hallelujah. And we can take those promises. Hallelujah. And we can release them. And that's what anticipation looks for. Anticipation looks for that. It looks for joy and it looks for something to attach itself to. Anticipation is the foretaste of the goodness of God. It's expecting him to perform his promises. Well, what do you say? Well, Stella, what is he going to perform? Well, what do you need? Do you, you know, what is he going to do? Well, what are you expecting? So you got to define your your expectation. And then you can, and that's why he says in, in, in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you says God thoughts to give you a hope and a future and a positive expectation. So now you've got, he's going to, he'll give it to you, but you, we have to ac access it and partner with it. I love this passage here. And it says in first uh, Corinthians two, nine and 10, it says, but as it is written, Things which eyes have not seen and ear has not heard and which has not entered into the heart of a man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us, God reveals them through the spirit for the spirit searches all things. Now let's talk about that. that because a lot of times people focus on the last phrase in this, in this scripture, so the spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. Now here's what's awesome about the spirit. The spirit searches all all things means the spirit literally searches all things. He looks into a circumstance in a situation and he looks
looks for that which parallels it and the, 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 the solution to it, to the heart and the mind of God. So every circumstance has a kingdom divine parallel. Every situation has a kingdom divine parallel that the Holy Spirit is looking for. He's searching for an attachment to the heart and mind of God. That's what he does. And then when we partner with the Holy Spirit and we come into agreement with the Holy Spirit and we come into agreement with the word that God has already said, that the Holy Spirit, which is like a search engine, he searches not only the heart and mind of God, he searches your circumstances. He's digging out this, he's digging out this circumstances and say, let me just look at what's going on here. Let me look at who's involved. Let me look at the heart of the one that's working in this situation. Let me look at the heart of the one that actually made that, that made that declare that declaration about releasing the department of justice to investigate parents because they're going to school board meeting. So just like we, the Holy spirit searches that. So the Holy spirit searches the hearts of those individuals who made that decision. He also searches the hearts of the parents who were going to those meetings. He searches the hearts of the children who are being impacted by what happens in the school board meetings and what the decisions of the department of justice makes. The Holy spirit searches all of that. So in the name of Jesus, we just say, Holy spirit, we come into agreement with the spirit of truth. And we decree and declare that the Holy spirit, which is the spirit of truth will bring the truth to the forefront and every lie, every deception and every falsehood will be exposed and brought to nothing. We decree, decree and declare that the power of the enemy is broken. And we say that God is raising up and see what's powerful about it. We can also decree around those parents. And we call out, we say right now, every parent that's on their radar, we set an angelic hedge of protection around those parents. And we put a wall of defense around those parents. We use the angelic host and we decree that the wall of defense, we give, we praise you father for giving them legal protections, legal defense, legal strategies in Jesus name. And we praise you Lord, that wherever they go, that the angels and the host of heaven accompany them and that the wicked one touches them not. That's what we get to do. And that's the level of authority that we're going to have to walk in, in this hour, in this new era. And, 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 you know, the enemy wants you to think that you're powerless, Marcus, that we're not strong, that we can't do this. But if we couldn't do it, God would not given us, he would not have given us this assignment. He wouldn't, who wouldn't have said, I need you to rise up. There is an army rising up. That's right. There's an army rising up from heaven and there is an army rising up on earth right now. And so we get to say unto the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Now that can happen a couple of different ways. You know, we have this image of it all of a sudden, the whole mountain proper plucking up and going up. But there's another paradigm that you can think about. When you when it, when it rains, what happens? The water falls on the earth and erodes the soil and washes the soil into the ocean. And so a lot of times we're looking for the mountain to be gone and God is still working. God is not moving the whole mountain at once because as the mountain is moved, there are things in the mountain that have to be exposed. There are rocks in that mountain. And so as the soil is moved away, then the rocks that are in the soil that were helping to hold the mountain in place can then they can be rolled away. And just like that paradigm in the natural, there are circumstances that are happening in our nation and in our world that the Lord has to expose this stuff. And as he exposes it, then it can be moved. Just like, you know, that's what he's, that, that's what he's doing. So this word impregnates us. The anticipation of the goodness of God impregnates us with preconceived notions of what God has promised. So what do you need? What are you pregnant with? What do you, what do you, what the Lord is saying? Look, I've got the, I've got the incorruptible seed of my word that you can plant in your spirit and you can, I can impregnate you with whatever you need. I have purposed and planned for you to manifest in the earth. He impregnates us with preconceived notions of what God has promised us. It reflects his opinion on the matter. In other words, what is God thinking about the circumstances? Well, we know what God thinks because of what God said. God put his thoughts in a book called the Bible, and then he gave us that Bible to allow us to, 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 to have access to his thoughts. And then he takes those thoughts that he's already written down, and then he partners with the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit then goes and 
searches even the depths of God. And so we know what God said back then. We know what God is saying right now. And we know what God is speaking in his thinking in his mind over your circumstance as it exists in your life right now. So there is no, that's what's so powerful. You know, God will convert anxiety to the joyful anticipation of his goodness. He gives us early advisories of what is to come. And he challenges us to mix that tingly feeling in your gut. Oh yeah, that tingly feeling in your gut. Yeah, that's anticipation. A lot of people say, well, you know, I'm a little anxious. No, you're not. That's not anxiety. Yeah, you cha change the language. That is the anticipation of what God is going to do. And the only thing that differentiates whether it is anxiety or whether it is anticipation is what you name it. What are you going to name that? What are you going to name that feeling in your spirit? What are you going to name? Are you going to call it worry? Or are you going to call it the anticipation of the goodness of God and then get a promise and attach it to that feeling? Yeah, see how that works? Ah, I love it. God gives us early advisories of what is to come. He shows us things to come. And that as he shows us things to come, we can now attach it to promises. We can attach it to his goodness. We can attach it to hope. We can attach it to expectations. Just a few scriptures on that on those promises. Here's just a couple of promises. I'm almost finished. Then Joshua said to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. We're expecting the Lord to do wonders in this circumstance. Therefore, return to your God. Observe kindness and justice. That's an action you can take. Look for kindness. Look for justice. Call it out when you see it. Decree it. And tell it. Tell the justice. When you see justice manifest, say justice in the name of Jesus. We acknowledge you and we release the angels of heaven to bring the justice of God to the forefront. Enlarge that justice, Lord. Expand it. Make it bigger. Make it stronger. Make it more powerful. Make it more noticeable. Speak to the justice and tell it how to grow. Okay. But as for me, I will watch expectantly for the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. We know that when we pray, this is the confidence that we have, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, we know that we have the petition that we request of him or that we ask of him. Last scripture, Romans 8, 23. And this is really what it's all about because we know the enemy is rearing his ugly head because his days are numbered. His time is up and his sentence has been issued and he just knows the jailer is coming because Jesus said he was releasing. In the he was releasing his angels to bind the tares so that the harvest could be gathered. There's a great harvest coming. It has already begun. I'm a harvester and I'm expecting people who need Jesus to come across my path. I'm expecting people who don't know Christ. I'm expecting people to find these videos and to come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'm expecting the anointing that removes burdens and destroys yoke is going to penetrate. They're going to be scrolling. They'll get stuck on one of my videos and then they'll start just because they, just because they observe the video. The Holy Spirit will penetrate their heart and their lives, will enter their home, will access their family. I release angels to every human being who views any video and any person under the sound of my voice. I decree and declare that angels are being released and assigned to their life right now, right this moment, to every video, every audio recording. I say I've ever spoken. Lord, I thank you that anybody that hears it, that their life comes under the influence of the kingdom of the Most High God and that that they come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I speak of those things that be not as though they are. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. See, we know that this is what's coming for. We long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies that he has promised us. He said in his word that we are, uh, th that's right, Nicole, Nicolette. Reality is if God decides not to do anything as Paul had a thorn in his flesh, God's grace is sufficient for us because we, because we living, because we living times of Matthew 24, last days, God is going to give us endurance and perseverance to build faith and give God glory in good and bad times. And we get to call forth. You see, here's, here's the beautiful thing about the kingdom of God. We get to name it and tell it what it's supposed to be.
You know, Jesus, if you think about it, does, would you, would a, would you, would a, would a man want to come back for a bride that's beat up, that's whiny, that's crying, that's saying, I'm just come get me out of here. No, you want, Jesus wants a bride that's equal in proportion to the groom, to its head. He wants a bride that's strong, that's powerful, that walks in pro, an equal proportion to the authority that is given to the head. And we are his bride. We are his body. And that's what we get to do. I am out of time. I'm going to stop. I'm saying I'm going to stop making these so long. I want to say thank you guys for being on here. If you have not joined the Kayo Circle, go to my Facebook public figure page, uh, personal page, Stella R. Payton. Click on that link and there is a link to join. Uh, we're going to be, we're excited to be getting ready for our full launch of the Kayo Circle. We've been in beta, in beta stage um, for the last year and now we're coming, going into 2022. We're coming out of beta and we're going to be going into full membership mode. So if you are a person who's been in the, if you've been going to the Kayo Circle, we are encouraging you to go ahead and select a membership. We've got two membership options and the third membership option, it won't go away completely, but it will no longer, you won't, we will no longer have full access to everything we do. You'll only have a limited access for a week. That's coming soon. As soon as we get the dates for our full scale launch, which will be during the months of November and December, we're waiting on confirmation from some of our partners and our speakers and our supporters who have been with us and who've helped us. So get ready for the full scale launch of the Kayo Circle. And when that launch happens, I'm just letting you guys know the Facebook community, the Kayo Circle will go away. So if you have not moved from the Kayo Circle on Facebook and join the Mighty Network Kayo Circle community, you need to go ahead and make that switch. The link is on Stella R. Payton. Go to that page, click on my cover photo, and you'll see the link to the Kayo Circle. You can click on there, and for a limited time, you will have access to the to the entry-level uh, group. The, it's called Explorers, but soon that group will only be available to people for either, it'll, it'll, it'll either be three days or seven days. I'm deciding I'm praying into it, asking the Lord, how do I do this? Because it has gotten to where there are some things we will no longer be able to say in public. There are some things that will necessarily be for the kingdom. And so even some of these videos will be very, very different going forward because we are on assignment. And when you're on assignment, sometimes you have to be stealth. Thank you guys for being on here with me. I appreciate you so much. Ronnie King, I'm my girl. That's my girl. I love you so much. Thank you, Nicolette. Make sure you join the network. Thanks, Beverly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, uh, Marcus. Oh, wow. Thank all of you guys for being on here with me. Thank you, Shekinah. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, I would just appreciate you. Thank you, Janina. Uh, Janina. You see the, these earrings, you guys, if you see Janina Marchbanks on here, she made these for me and sent them. Are these not amazing? I love, love, love them. They're such a beautiful gift. And I feel the pres presence and prayers when I wear this i know i have people praying for me janina's praying for me till next time you guys you make it a terrific day bye-bye